I've got a bit of a problem with the public perception of science. Well, actually, I've got lots of problems with that, but this is one you haven't heard before because I'm here in my home gym uh, and slash studio slash garage. Um, and I'm supposed to be working out, but actually I got distracted because I was lying on my bench and thinking, I feel really sorry for something in particular. And you know who I, not who, I haven't anthropomorphized it. You know what I feel really sorry for? Chemistry. I think chemistry has a terrible PR department. The worst PR department since the people who advised Susan Boyle on the hashtag for her album release, which was Susan Album Party. But of course, we all read it as Sus Anal Bum Party. That's the level of public image disaster we're talking about. Because let's look at the sciences that dominate the public perception of science, right? There's physics, time travel, the cosmos, stars, galaxies, you know, black holes. Everybody loves that stuff. You don't need any convincing. But let's be honest, you know, the beginning of the universe and what happens inside a black hole doesn't really affect most people's day to day lives in a major way. I mean, I know there's other physics as well, but I mean, when did you last use gravity? I've never seen gravity. They don't even know what it is. Their theories don't even all add up. Physics, get your acts together. OK, I'm kidding. Physics is cool. I've said before it was my favourite subject at school. I would have done it if my maths had been better. But um, what's the other big science that dominates in the public eye. It's the other one that I gravitated to at school. It's biology. Nobody needs to be taught to find animals amazing, to have wonder at the living world, plants and even microbes. You know, the microbiome has become really popular to talk about in recent years, even though a bit like gravity, I've never seen it. So I'm just taking biologists word that it exists, just like the physicists. You know, there's a lot of trust involved here. Um, but we don't talk about chemistry anywhere near as much. Think about science communicators. Name some famous science communicators. If you ask the average person, they'll say Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Brian Cox. Um, name some famous scientists. They'll say Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton. These are all physicists, right? Or they may say people like um, Richard Dawkins or David Attenborough. Um, again, biologists, right? Or, you know, who have I got on my wall behind me here? Charles Darwin, if you're naming famous scientists. Now, of course, there are some of the most famous scientists in history were chemists, right? But so what's the point of this video? I've got two reasons that I've come up with, with why I think chemistry is not uh, depicted prominently enough in the public idea of what con constitutes science. Even though if you ask a kid to draw a scientist or you look at emojis for scientists. What is it? It's somebody in a white coat wearing safety goggles, holding an Erlenmeyer flask with some green liquid or a test tube bubbling on a Bunsen burner or something. It's a chemist, right? That is literally the definition of the stereotypical definition of scientist. And yet most people couldn't name a living chemist. And I've got to say, I was just looking on our chemistry just now, which from the posts I read, Seems like quite a wholesome subreddit. I quite enjoyed watching, uh, reading people talking about ke living chemists, kind of like rock stars and appreciating them. But I, I realised how I don't know any of these people. And then even I was looking at some of the Nobel Prize winners in chemistry and these were new names to me. And, and you know, I'm someone really interested in science and it's only in the last 10 years or so that I've started reading kind of things that I just want to read in science rather than stuff I have to study for. And I've really gravitated towards the just being amazed by chemistry, particularly biochemistry, right? Uh, well, I'll come back to that. I want to tell you the two points, uh, the two reasons why I think chemistry isn't so well recognized. The first one, I think, is when thinking of famous scientists, there are, of course, lots of chemists on that list. People like Marie Curie, Pasteur, Mendeleev, these are chemists, right? But I think in the early days of, of science, um, you had people who crossed lots of boundaries, lots of fields. And so people wouldn't necessarily link some of these names with chemistry, even though their biggest achievements were within chemistry. And secondly, I think chemistry is difficult to define. 
people understand intuitively, I think, what physics is. They understand biology as, you know, living things. But chemistry straddles both of those. It's harder to define what chemistry is. And, okay, sorry, actually, there are three reasons. The third is that I think a lot of the great discoveries in chemistry get sort of snaffled up by other fields because that's where they're applied. You know, when people talk about Formula One and, and all the technology involved, they talk about engineering and physics. They don't talk about the chemists that made those materials possible. When people talk about uh, pharmaceuticals, it's chemists coming up with, you know, some of these um, breakthroughs in the lab, but the application is creating drugs. The application is saving lives. So it gets kind of depicted within biological sciences as well. And so, you know, biochemistry in particular, I have really just developed this amazing um, appreciation for in in the last decade, decade or so. And there's a, there's a familiar kind of trope, a joke in medicine that uh, medical students spend too long studying things like the Krebs cycle, metabolic and cellular pathways. And you don't need that in, in your day to day life as a doctor. And that's true. I have never used the Krebs cycle in my clinical work, but I think that is such a short sighted way of looking at it. I wouldn't enjoy my job anywhere near as much if I didn't have that appreciation. If you ask me to design a medical school syllabus, which I don't think anybody should because it would have way too much useless stuff in it. But that's the stuff I find really interesting. I would put more Krebs cycle in. I love the Krebs cycle. I think the understanding of how complex life is, how amazing that evolution brought us all these processes. And if you talk about evolution, you know, talking about the origin of life. And I've mentioned Nick Lane's writing. He's another very influential science communicator. And he talks about the living world a lot, but he is a chemist, right? So biochemistry, that understanding of the what's going on inside a cell, I, I mean, I get as much satisfaction from that going to work as I do from saving uh, a, a human life because that gives me that awe, that gives me that wonder at the human body, this thing, this machine that I'm trying to perform some maintenance on. And, you know, my understanding of its complexity is so rudimentary. And that gives me great wonder. If I didn't have that, I don't think I'd find my job anywhere near as satisfying. So this was a massive rant. And I did say I was going to put rants on this channel. Um, and obviously it's not scripted. And I apologize for that. But this enraged me. I was doing a bit of cooking today. Cooking is chemistry, right? Chemistry affects all of our lives in much more real ways than I think a lot of the biology we learn about does. I love learning about birds of paradise in the Amazon rainforest. But again, is that affecting my life in a major way? Probably not. Again, I, I love learning about the Higgs boson and things like that. But just look around me in this room. These plastics, these the chemicals that make these lights uh, light up, the paints and solvents and things that I've got in my garage here. It's all chemical. I mean, this synthetic material that I'm working, that I'm wearing, working, that I'm working, that's all chemistry, right? So I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is put some fucking respect on chemistry's name. One thing I wanted to say was that I feel almost cheated out of years of enjoyment and interest in chemistry because it was not taught very well, at least to me in school. Uh, it was by far the poor cousin out of the sciences that I wasn't that bothered with uh, compared to the other two whose classes. Why do I keep referring to science as people? Um, the classes of which I really enjoyed attending. Uh, and I realise I have no clue the current state of chemistry teaching. So I'd love to hear from chemistry teachers or chemistry students about kind of what your feelings are about how chemistry is taught these days. I know a lot of public engagement in science um, activities are chemistry related. You, you know, you still get those shows with like whiz bangs and things exploding on stage and elephant toothpaste and stuff, uh, which are obviously great fun and ways to engage kids. But does that give a kind of slightly cliched view of what chemistry is? Uh, so I'd love to hear from people in the know and not someone like me who's just speaking from complete ignorance.